First News with Keeler in the morning on WIBX and WIBX950.com. Jim Piccola from the State DOT on the line right now. James, good morning. Hey, good morning, everyone. Uh, you're a big Syracuse fan, right? Yes. Uh, kept me right at the edge of my seat again. <laughs> crazy, but, uh, crazy, crazy. Yeah. Um, yeah no. Great game, and uh, can't wait to see him play again. All right, uh, what is, are you putting a modular home in over there on that circle uh, over by uh, the Route 8 bridge? What's going on? It looks like a foundation, a basement going in. What's happening? Um, no, it's, uh, they're going, uh, right now we have uh, the contractors out there. They're working on these uh, micro piles for the new foundation for the uh, bridge itself. Also, we're, uh, there's a contractor out there, subcontractor, working on the uh, uh, high-mass lighting that will be going in at the intersection or at the interchange. So uh, things are starting to move. Uh, okay. Coming up this week, uh, starting Monday, we're going to close three of the four ramps there uh, at the interchange. Okay. How long will they be closed? They will be closed until the bridge is actually open itself. Okay. So um... long-term closure. Uh, which one will be? Uh, which one will remain open? The one going into New Hartford from uh, from the north. Uh, if you were if you were coming say from eight forty, uh, heading on eight, you go from eight forty to eight. You would be able to take that down onto Campion Road. Yes, that okay. that ramp there, and also you would be able to uh, if you were on um, if you were on uh, let's see, if you were coming. And uh, you wanted to get on to 12 North also from 840, you'd be able to make that movement there. Okay. Is- All right. All right. Well, that's going to be uh, – and this project is expected to take um, a few months. How long will this take? Uh, it'll be done com- – totally completed in the spring of next year. Okay. Uh, but, you know, we're hoping uh, with uh, Mother Nature on our side and uh, we, you know, get you know some good weather this year that we could hopefully have that bridge completed by the end of this year, this season. Um, if not, you know, whatever it takes us, and uh, but we'll definitely be done come springtime. Okay, all right. Um, and, and, and does the does the, the road actually move, or will the bridge be in the same place? The bridge will be in the same place. Okay, yep. all um, right. It and will it, be higher. Yeah. Um, you know, over the last few years, it's uh, gotten, I think, uh, two hits that I know of. Um, so it will go from like 14 and a half to like 16 foot. Um, it'll go from a four span to a two span bridge and, uh, we're making accommodations for future build out in that interchange, um, in times to come. All right. So you, uh, you're talking, when you say it's taken a couple of hits, you're talking about, uh, trucks that have gone through that are, are too high for the bridge. Yes. Okay. Yep. All right. Ooh. Yeah. Uh, that would be something I would do. Ooh. Yeah, and, Thanks, and that's because Jim. they, you know, either they leave something up or what have you. It, mm-hmm. it is standards and what have you, but we're going to be raising that up to sixteen foot vertical. Okay, plant. and when All you right. say going to four spans to two, that's not lanes. That's what the the well, the you piers are, yeah, the piers that support the bridge itself. Um, you'll have as you if you look at it now, you have a center span, and then on each side. Of the roadway of uh, 5812, you have uh, piers on that side. We're doing away with those um, outside piers, and you'll just have the center pier. So you go from four span to two span. Okay, all right. Will the uh, will the yield issue become, uh, become a little easier to maneuver for people, or does that probably stay the same? Unfortunately, that'll remain the same. Um, but like I said, because we are widening the bridge, the length of the bridge will be longer and eliminating those piers that are on the ends. Um, we are hoping, you know, with future funding that we can take care of that interchange and, you know, correct those short weaves that you yeah. see when you drive in that. Okay. All right. Uh, Andrew. Uh, on the topic of bridges, one person called in because they knew you'd be on. Are there any plans to do a similar project to the one in Whitesboro? Near the Burger King, there. That bri- I think uh, that's a ramp from a risk, you know, a commercial drive going down into to a Riskany Boulevard. Yeah, I haven't heard anything on that yet, Andrew. Um, but uh, if you know, as things develop, we'll let you know. All right. Okay. You're the man. Uh, and then uh, downtown, uh, downtown Utica is uh, uh, obviously on a lot of people's minds. Um, things really progressing down there. Yes. Um, 
our contractor is finishing up uh, the 5S project. Uh, we have some concrete uh, center medians to pour, stampcrete. Uh, we have some sidewalks to complete. and uh, But it's really starting to come together nice, and we'll have our landscaper in here. And like I said, we'll... Uh, Everything will really start to come together, and it'll be a great project when everything is done. And then when uh, and when the hospital is complete, you'll have um, we're calling it now the the Win Hospital and Casino in downtown Utica. <laughs> the uh, <laughs> I heard slot that. machines right in the lobby. I heard that yesterday. Yeah. <clears throat> um, we, you'll have work to do to connect everything, or will that all just happen as part of the construction? That's. Anything that takes place will be done by the hospital uh, along the city streets and, and where they connect into okay. Ariskany 5S. That's all part of uh, that mitigation work with the hospital. And one more thing. I know that Joe uh, Joe Lode was always uh, very upset with you over the uh, the reduction in lanes as you're getting off on Broad Street on North Genesee. So if you're coming up, uh, if you're coming up Genesee going south, uh, yeah. from, you know, babes in that area. And then you were to get off on Broad Street. Um, it went from two lanes to one lane. You eliminated one of the streets. Um, Joe's always been very critical of that. But now when you see what is has been completed over there, I think I kind of like it. Yeah, yeah. It takes, you know, before there was J Street that ran parallel to 5F. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it was kind of confusing, especially if you're not from the area and you haven't traveled it. You know, like, where do you go? Where should I be? You know, so there was a lot of, you know, pavement that really wasn't needed. And we feel that this is going to get, you know, make a lot more sense, uh, a lot more uh, understanding how to drive it. And uh, what we're hoping, too, is, you know, one of the things in the project with the roundabout um, and kind of squeezing things in, uh, We what we'd like to see is, you know, traffic slow down, you know, yeah, 30 yeah. miles an hour. And uh, we're starting to see a little bit of it. I think when once the uh, landscaping is put in and the trees, it'll give you more of that closed effect, and people will slow down, uh, take their time driving through our downtown. All right. A uh, question from the app, or right, I here. guess maybe a statement, and, and maybe you can fill in some blanks. Uh, bridge construction over Cayuta Lake on 28 North to Old Forge will be closed April 1st to June 29th. Is that correct? Do you that know is that? correct. Yep, yep. Um, actually, uh, we just put out the uh, press release last night, went out. Um, the governor uh, uh, sent that out, stating that uh, we're going to be taking care of the truss bridge. And right past the truss bridge over Woodhall Road is another bridge, County Route 72 it's called. And we're going to be replacing the decks on both of them. And um, with that project there, what we're hoping to do, uh, instead of carrying that through the whole entire construction season um with alternating one-way traffic uh we're shutting it down uh come actually monday the 29th um and what we'll do is try to have those uh, decks repaired and back in shape and open by the uh, weekend just before the fourth of july all right uh, a lot of traffic going uh, up and down from uh, from up there. Uh, one more uh, quick question on the, and you might not know anything about this, but uh, for those people that are traveling to uh, to the city, is the uh, is the the Governor Cuomo, the former Tappan Zee Bridge, is it safe? Yes, you would not be on any of our bridges if they were not safe. And, and, and uh, we had received some word that maybe this uh, this story that came out in the Albany Times Union about that bridge were things were were issues that had been addressed uh, as construction was going on or before construction uh you know bill i'm not really you know versed in what you know went on there and what they're talking about yep. but i can tell you this you know things always come up during construction and and again they're always taken care of safely we would never have traffic on any bridge that we felt was unsafe it is amazing when you think about um you know, how do you build a, a bridge that uh, that is so long that has to actually have pillars going into the water? It's uh, it's really quite incredible. Oh, it, it was an a unbelievable engineering feat, uh, the work that was done on that bridge. And, uh, again, yep. it, it's a beautiful bridge. It's a safe bridge. And uh, I, I haven't, unfortunately, I haven't had a chance to go on it, but uh, looking forward to it. All right. You have anything else? Good. Uh I was just going to say, well, I've got a, a comment here. 
What was I going to say? Uh, Jim, I think part of what Bill just referenced, for, I think, from a listener was we see all these reports that say, you know, 87 bridges in New York Strait, uh, structurally deficient and unsound, things like that. That doesn't yep. mean they can't be driven on, right? I mean, obviously, they would just shut them down if, if they thought they were going to fall. That is correct. It's just like the Route 8 bridge that's being uh, replaced. We When they talk about structurally deficient, like uh, looking at the shoulders, in today's standards, what we're going to be doing is the, the shoulders on the inside would be, instead of uh, like maybe two foot, they're going to be four foot on the new bridge. The outside shoulders are going to be 10 foot. So everything is being brought up to standard. So when they talk about structurally deficient, those are some of the things. It could be bridge rail that's out of, you know, that's out of date that we've upgraded and stuff and, and, you know, things like that. So, but the safety of the bridge is always there. If we, you know, see that there's an issue, we flag them, there's yellow flags and then red flags, and they have to be addressed in very certain time manner, uh, time frames, so that, you know, those corrections can be made. But if a bridge is unsafe, you would not be able to travel over. Well, and there's, there's nothing as horrific uh, that I can ever remember as, as, what happened near Amsterdam uh, when that bridge on the throughway went out? I mean, that just uh, and that was storm water. Um, it, it was just, I mean, people drove off that bridge not realizing the bridge had collapsed. It was just a horrific uh, thing that occurred. Could you imagine? And my it? and my guess is uh, we learned from that and don't want anything ever to happen like that ever again. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah. All right, James. We appreciate it as always. We uh, we we get a lot a uh, lot of information from you, and we appreciate that. Oh, thank you so much. And guys, stay safe, stay healthy, and uh, thank you for everything. All right, that's right, Jim. Let's go Mets. You got it. <laughs> All right, Jim. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Jim Picola from the uh, from the DOT.